Welcome back to the Atlanta Fibroid Center YouTube channel. While we are most known for our work in the non-surgical treatment of uterine fibroids, we commonly see other conditions that are either seen exclusively in women or at least primarily in women. And one of those very common things that we see is female infertility. Infertility is an extremely common condition. Um, one of every seven couples suffer with infertility um, and once male factor is ruled out, the focus is then on the woman and the most common reason why women are infertile has to do with a blockage in their fallopian tubes. And so one of the main diagnostic procedures that is performed for women with infertility is what's called a hysterosalpingogram or HSG. An HSG is performed in the office um, Patients will be uh, placed on an x-ray table and the images is done while we're inserting a very tiny catheter, much thinner than this pen, um, inside the cavity of the uterus. Once inside the cavity, we'll inflate gently a very small balloon and that will be important for two reasons. One, it'll be helpful so the tube doesn't slip out when we're injecting the contrast material. And also two, we want to make sure that that contrast material doesn't leak out when we're injecting and so that we can see not only the cavity of the uterus, but to make sure that the tubes are open. This is a representative image obtained during a hysterosalpingogram. You can see the catheter coming up from below. The catheter is placed into the cervical opening and advanced gently into the cavity of the uterus. And then we inject contrast material that we can see under x-ray. And so there is a very typical kind of triangular appearance to the cavity of the uterus. It's normal size. There are no filling defects or any other um, problems with the cavity of the uterus. Sometimes you can see scarring or polyps or fibroids um, that are either in the cavity or impressing on the cavity. This cavity is normal. And then what we should see um, the catheter coming in at the bottom point of the triangle and at the other two points of the triangle you should see as we do here very thin fallopian tubes filling all the way out to the ends and then at the ends of the tubes where the ovaries are this end of the tube is open to the pelvic cavity and you should see this kind of plume of contrast just spilling out into the pelvis um, and this is a normal study and the contrast that is spilled out uh, will be resorbed and excreted by the patient's kidneys within a very short time after the procedure. So this is a normal hysterosalpingogram, and that's what we see most commonly on HSG, and this is important information for the reproductive endocrinologist that may be uh, looking at this patient and taking care of them. Um, there are other two other scenarios that we might see on the hysterosalpingogram, and I will show you that in a moment. Uh, the first is that you may see a blockage at the beginning of one or both of the tubes. Um, so you might see a tube on one side like we do here, but you don't see the tube on this side. Or you might not see a tube on either side. And again, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, we will continue to inject contrast if we see this. And sometimes with a little added injection pressure, the tube will then open normally. So initially there was a blockage by a, a mucus plug at one or both of the openings, but with added injection pressure during the HSG, it opened that block tube. So in a sense, the HSG was not only diagnostic of the problem, that there was a blockage, but it also took care of the problem. So that's scenario number two. So scenario number one, the most common, normal, Scenario number two is that a blockage in one or both of the tubes, which was then resolved by the HSG itself. The third of the three scenarios that we most commonly see is a blockage at one or both of the tubes, like a scenario two, but we continue to inject contrast and that one or both tubes that are blocked remains blocked. That's scenario three. And for those patients, we can then take out our diagnostic catheter and replace it 
with a different catheter that's a little bit larger that allows us to put a small catheter inside of it and direct it into the tube that's blocked either on one or both sides and unblock it from the inside similar to a plumber unclogging a clog in a pipe. The, the pipes themselves are fine but there is a plug at the beginning that we can mechanically dislodge and open that tube um, allowing a window of opportunity for that woman to become pregnant. So here is a patient um, that was unable to get pregnant for six years um, and we performed an HSG in her and you can uh, see the nice normal triangular cavity of her uterus so the uterine cavity is normal this is just a tiny air bubble so you can ignore that uh, but what I'd like you to focus on is unlike the normal case that I just showed you that showed a fallopian tube at the eye at both points of the triangle you don't see a tube on either side so she has a blockage at the beginning of both of her tubes so continuing with this patient you can see now I I've placed a very small catheter into the opening of her left fallopian tube and have dislodged the plug and when you inject contrast you can see the the tube is now open so we've recanalized the left fallopian tube in this patient and we'll do the same thing on the right hand side so looking at the right hand side we recanalized the right and I pulled the catheter back because I want to make sure that when we've taken the tube the catheter out the tube will stay open and so we've injected back into the cavity and you see the cavity filling and now her right tube is completely open with a nice spill on the right so we we have recanalized both of her fallopian tubes and within three months she got pregnant and then she delivered a very uh, healthy baby boy baby Austin